we have a problem now. We want to develop an expression for the dampening constant of the dash pad shown in the figure. So a dash pad is an arrangement of a cylinder, a cylinder and a piston. Okay. So this one. So this is the same as the uh, this uh, arra this uh, arrangement is the same also as the um, arrangement of um, call this uh, shock observer. So I'm bringing down here a sample of a shock observer. So they have the same principle, Clark. Uh, so they have the same principle. We have this one. We have your clearance here, and we have here your viscous fluid and you have your piston so the same here it has a piston but uh, you will notice here it's some sort of an helical blade okay? but it's the same as a piston moving up and down as you acted by a force when you supply a force or that is the weight by the uh, force that is being acted by the weight of the or weight of the car or weight of the motorcycle during a rough road um, acceleration so we have uh, the same arrangement of this one and this one okay so we're going to develop the dampening constant uh, for this uh, dash pad and we want to attain the equation uh, to derive an equation to generate a general uh, equation or let's say uh, uh, general solution to attain a force for the dampening that will be force times your c times the velocity for the dampening constant uh, for the dampening constants of a mm, dash pad which is submerged in a viscous fluid Okay, so we have the given here, so you have the force acting here, so let's change this one to F. So we have here the force acting on this um, a piston, so you have the corresponding velocity which is in the maximum velocity of the B sub O, then you have the clearance in D and we have the given diameter. So for the size of the piston then we have the viscous fluid that is surrounding no? this is our viscous fluid that is surrounding our pistons so as the as the piston uh, moves up and down on this viscous fluid so the vibration and also the velocity of the piston or absorbed by the piston from the moment on during a rough road or let's say that is a rough road or a, let's say uh, off-road road so it is being transferred to the viscous fluid okay? it's being absorbed so at, as the piston moves in, uh, up and down so the velocity decreases so that is decreases due to the friction that is being uh, produce uh, the, the, the friction that is being produced of the viscous fluid so the velocity is decreases and those below and those energy and velo and velocity and also the energy is dissipated as it transverse up and down so those energy were converted to heat uh, from uh, let's say this converted to friction and this is converted to heat so that's why if you're going to travel, let's say for a long period of time, uh, let's say an off-road or let's say a long period of maybe around one hour, two hours, three hours. So after for a long ride, if you're going to touch the surface of the, uh, the cylinder of your uh, shock observer, you will notice that it gained a heat. It has a change in temperature. So from initial point of state, so without running and to the final point that you stop running or, or tra uh, traveling you will observe that as you touch the, sur the surface of this one surface wall of the cylinder so it has a higher temperature compared to at initial state so that's why 
uh, from your thermodynamics that it also states that energy cannot be created nor destroyed it just only transformed from one form to another so the energy that is being produced by the uh, call this the force or because of the rock road is being converted into a heat by means of the friction rubbing on the uh, rubbing in the uh, walls uh, uh, between the uh, viscous fluid and also in the wall of the cylinder so those uh, we call this those energy that is being uh, produced by the force is being converted into heat that is from uh, energy created uh, energy create uh, cannot be created nor destroyed it just only transfer from one form which is from force okay oscillating force up and down and from one form to another so that is the force oscillating up and down and it is converting into heat so from force and converted into heat so that is that is equal to uh, let's say that would be maybe a uh, kinetic energy into uh, internal energy or let's say mct delta t so that is already in heat okay now the dampening constant of the dash pad so it can be determined by using the shear stress equation so we'll be using the shear stress equation so we all know that our shear stress equation so that is shear stress that will be is equal to the mu times the uh, times the change in velocity divided by the change uh, change in velocity with respect to the change in y so that is the gap between the surface of the, your we call this um, uh, from stationary to the moving plate so if you can still remember the last lesson that we have tackled so the derivation of this uh, shear stress then we can also use we will also be using the viscous flow and the rate of the fluid flow equation so uh, we can use the equation that is your Q which is the area times your velocity so we're just only going to add the boundaries there now I'm bringing this diagram so you will notice here class so we have call this so we have here I add this is an additional you have your Y here then you have the differential strip okay, which is dy so changes no? so we add this one since we are merely concerned with the viscous or the shear stress so you will notice that uh, the shear stress of the fluid which is near uh, we have the shear stress near the uh, wall of the piston is uh, less compared to the shear stress on the wall because this is already dependent on the uh, we call this velocity because the velocity near the wall of the piston has the maximum velocity of this above and it has a zero velocity when it is near on the cylinder uh, sorry that if the uh, call this the velocity has a maximum value which is near the piston wall and it has a zero velocity when the viscous fluid is near at the cylinder of the dash pad now I have here um, another uh, representation I just only twist the system uh, the view now we have here the velocity okay, and you have also the force so you will notice uh, we have a gradient so at this point you will, we will not we will notice that at this point the velocity of the fluid which, which is near at the con, uh, on the stationary wall of the cylinder we have the velocity which is equal to zero now as you move away from the wall of the cylinder and going near to the wall of the piston it has gained a velocity to uh, the maximum so starting from here increasing increasing until it reaches to the near of the pistons wall increasing 
until to the maximum velocity which is equal to the b sub o. So it's just on the, the, this, this is only just a constant number 3%. So we don't know what is the constant velocity since uh, this represent now the maximum velocity and this is the uh, starting velocity which is uh, 0 at 0.0 now. So we're taking the differential of this strip Okay, so since we have here, we form here a triangle now, we have here the strip that is, uh, we're taking a strip to get the value of this uh, part of the differential and differentiate of this one. So we have your dy, so that is uh, differential of your y, since we have a gradient going here. Then we have your y, which is the distance of the dy, so this one depends since we do not know which which uh, part of this one so we have y plus your dy so that will be the distance of the strip on this one so we're going to assume that the velocity in the shear stress your v and tau are acting on a distance that is y plus your dy okay, so that is in here and we're going to assume also, we're gonna let also that the shear stress, so our shear stress, B, equal, uh, B, B minus your uh, velocity in shear stress, we have your velocity minus the differential uh, velocity, and we have your shear plus your differential shear. So we have here the change of shear, and we also have here the change in velocity since. We have initially, we have the value of velocity B sub O as you touches to the wall of the, uh, of this point of the cylinder, so it loses its velocity. So it has a decreasing velocity, that's why it is a negative differential. Because we have your B, the maximum, minus the differential of velocity as we touches to the wall of the dash pad below. Then we have also the shear stress initially plus the differential shear stress since uh, we change uh, since we have the change in velocity. So uh, from this equation, that the shear stress is dependent on the change in the velocity. So we have two, and also the change in velocity and also the change in shear is dependent on the change in distance between the plates so from this one so we have here the dependent no if you can still remember from the last lessons we have here as she increases also the the below uh, the velocity it has it has effect in the shear stress of the uh, of our solution uh, of the shear uh, it has a big effect on the shear stress as you change the velocity and also the change in y so that will be the height of the fluid from the moving plate then we have I think we need to start with the force that is acting on the wall since we are merely concerned with the use of the shear stress of the viscous flow now our force on the wall which is on the side of this uh, piston okay, so we can generate, uh, we have the equation that is, that is exposed on that one for shearing the fluid. So we have your equation, so we have um, our shear stress, so from deformable bodies, so we have your shear stress that is equal to force over your area. Now your force, I'm oh sorry. Now our force is equal now to um, this is area. Okay, so derive the transpose that one, then multiply it by shear. Now our area. So our area at this side, which is the she for shearing the fluid, no, for shearing the fluid of the visco fluid uh, viscous fluid. So we have the area which is the side or the annular or the side surface of the piston so that will be pi times the diameter of the piston times the length so since this we have already the surface of this part okay so we are merely concerned 
of the part here that is directly in contact with the fluid and between the uh, and the fluid that is also in contact with the piston's uh, uh, cylinder's wall. Then it is multiplied by our shear stress. Now our shear stress, uh, we uh, we call it. Uh, uh, we're going to de uh, differentiate it with respect to the change in y. So with respect to change in y. So as we changing, as we change the y, or let's say that uh, with respect to dy, so we have a differential value of y. So what will be the value? Okay. So what will be the value of your shear stress? So we're going to differentiate that one. So usually, if you're going to with respect to dy, so if you're going to differentiate that one, the same also with the other side. So that will be force over your dy. So with respect to dy, that will be pi d l times your shear stress over your dy. Now I'm going to transpose that one. So we have here pi d l. So we have your shear stress of your dy times the dy. So we have now this uh, form of equation. Now, from our shear stress, so here we want to express it in terms of velocity, our equation for our general equation for the uh, for the problem. So our shear stress, this one, we're going to do a derivative, a der uh, first derivative with respect to dy since this one is already um, derivative for the first, uh, sorry, we're going to add this one, okay. So differentiate at the derivative of the shear stress. So we have your derivative of the shear stress. Now, from this equation, you from our shear stress, we have to differentiate that one. So differentiate. Uh, derivative of the shear stress with respect to dy that will be equal to your mu so again we, this is already your first derivative so it will be a second derivative since we generalize all so we have the second derivative of your velocity then the second derivative with respect to dy then we're going to substitute this one to the equation so we have your force now is equal to pi d l times the value of since uh, we forgot since we are in the negative velocity so we'll be adding a negative sign here since we are in decreasing okay, decreasing velocity so I will add a negative here then multiply by mu so we have here the second derivative of velocity divided by the uh, with the second derivative with respect to the uh, respect to the clearance or let's say the space then you have here your dy so rearranging that so we can rearrange this one in this form pi dl so i'm gonna put here the dy then multiply with mu second derivative and we have here second derivative with respect to the y now one problem uh, that we need to tackle also here is that the shear stress on this part for the viscous on this area on your cylinder worm uh, we call the cylinder uh, on this part the shear stress okay so the shear stress on this part and also the shear stress on this part are different okay so we're going to assume that um, the shear stress of this viscous fluid on the side of the wall and also the shear stress of the fluid on this side are um, so we try to equate the force that is being generated by this part and this part are equal to attain a uniform mean velocity in the direction of the motion of the fluid so we can rewrite our equation or rewrite write another equation uh, which is related on that one we know that our uh, we call this we know that our pressure 
or let's say the the pressure that is being exerted on the fluid below so this part okay the pressure that is being exerted at that uh, that area so that will be or uh, we have your p so that will be the pressure that will be forced over your area or this is also the same also the shear stress that will be force of the area now our force uh, our area sorry that will be equal to pi over 4 that is t squared so that is the surface area of this fluid okay so we will try to equate now the pressure uh, the force of this one into this one so let's rewrite our uh, rewriting our equation or we can so we can rewrite this as like this one so we have your p so that will be 4 f over your pi d squared okay so in order to equate on this side so this is the pi dl which is the um, annular or the side no side area of the piston so let's try to equate that one so that we'll be having the same values so let's have to transpose this one we have your pi uh, pressure times your pi okay then this is will be d and this is equal to 4f and also the d so if you're going to cancel this one so this is force okay so that one will be pi d then i'm going to differentiate this one this equation with respect to dy since uh, we are merely concerned to equating it with the other force so we have your p times your pi we have your d here then differentiate with respect to dy is also equal to 4f is equal to the pi d to dy so to attain the annular the same also here the surface in the previous this one so we have the an cross multiply of this one so we have your pi d dy is equal to 4f this is your diameter which is a 4 and uh, this is your f of force then this is multiplied also by the change in y y pi dy this one pi times the diameter then the change in y denotes the annular area between Okay, so we're trying to achieve that one between the area of this one annular area between y and between y and y plus dy at this point okay at this point okay this part now since we're trying to assume the uniform mean velocity in the direction of the motion so the, we will try to equate the forces uh, so this is already in force since, since this is pressure the unit of pressure we have newton meter squared then multiplied by the meter here and another meter here we have the concept this is, this is now the force on the annular so this uh, let's name this is an EQ, EQ let's say this is EQ equation one sample then we have the previous um, this is an equation let's say this is equation sorry let's name this one and this is our equation two okay, so let's change this one so let's name this one is an equation two here okay so we'll equate the equation one and equation two since this is already in the terms of force so equating so that will be 4 4 F that will be 4 times the force then you have the diameter of the piston then the change in Y which is equal to the negative no, negative pi times the diameter times the length of the piston then we have your dy the change in y here and the absolute dynamic viscosity and the second derivative 
of the velocity with respect to the change in y and we can cancel out this one and this one so we have your same so we have here so let's do a transpose equation so we have now the second derivative of the velocity with the change in y is equal now to the four times your force divided by so this is now become negative divided by phi times the diameter so this will become square times the length and we have the absolute dynamic viscosity so let's try to integrate this one twice but first let's have now what will be the boundary okay so we try we're trying to figure out so what will be the velocity when uh, initially our dash or our piston here at the maximum velocity when our d is uh, when we say our uh, so we try to differentiate with the boundary where our b which is at the maximum b sub o or the maximum velocity and at when where y is equal to zero so it means that our wall or the value of y which is initially on the touches on the uh, wall of the piston then another boundary which is when our b become when our velocity becomes zero so that is uh, when it touch uh, when it touches on this part so on the bottom and where our y is now equal to d so that is when our uh, boundary which is the distance now is the same also the value of the clearance so it means that when the velocity is zero it means that our uh, we call this uh, our dash pad or let's say our dash pad so it can be at initial state so or it can be also when the dash pad is already touches the wall of the cylinder or uh, near the wall of the cylinder then we have the value of the b so we have the, the clearance here so initial state we have b which is the maximum velocity at y is zero and another boundary which is b is uh, is, uh, the velocity is at zero where our y so the distance or let's say the strip here we have already is equal now to the same value with the clearance okay continuing thing continuing continuing from the uh, no, below from below so we're going to integrate this one twice so i'm going to integrate the uh, equation twice so if I'm going to integrate this one, so the same also we have to integrate on the other side. So in integrating this one with respect to dy here, okay. so integrating dy, then we have here negative 40, which is you have your pi d squared times the L is mu. So integrating this one with respect to dy, the same also. So when we're going to integrate the other side, so we have to integrate also on the other side. So that we have the same operation. So from the our integral, so this is uh, from derivative in order to return it back to its original. So you're going to integrate so that is the derivative is the opposite of the uh, integral. So this will become now your uh, derivative of the velocity with derivative of your dy or with respect to y now this is equal now since we have here your 4p pi d squared and l are just only a number so this become uh, just only a constant so let's brought this one out so we have pi d squared times the l then absolute viscosity then we have your y then plus the constant so we name this one since we have two derivatives here so from uh, second we have the second derivative so we're going to name this one as c1 
Okay. Then integrating it again. Uh, since it, we need to integrate it twice, so I'm going to integrate this whole equation again. So I'm going to integrate that this the uh, derivative of velocity with respect to dy. Then you have your dy is equal to now your negative 4p. Okay, that will be pi d squared l u. So I'm going to integrate this one with respect to y dy then plus your c sub 1 then you have your dy so we have here uh, derivative of uh, integration of integration uh, integration of the derivative of velocity with respect to dy we have your b so it just only going back to its original state now this one we have negative uh, 4p over pi d squared times your length then mu so this become you have your y squared here then you have your 2 so, then plus your c1 so that will be y times your c1 then plus your C2. Now this this now becomes our general solution. So this from your differential equation, you can still remember. So mostly uh, the application of vibration uh, is more on differential equations. So that's why we bring out the differential equation again. So it's a small review from your previous uh, class uh, subject. So this now become our uh, general solution or let's say general equation. So given that uh, I was stating before is the boundary which is your at uh, this time this one and this one. Okay. So substituting that boundaries to our general equation so what will be the velocity when our uh, when our y is at zero and we have the maximum velocity so what will be the velocity and what will be the velocity for this one and what will be the velocity when our velocity is zero and we have the y this one which is already or almost that equal to the uh, already equal to the uh, clearance so substituting that one to our equation and here are the solutions so um, at uh, we have your boundary we have your b which is equal to uh, b sub o so since we are decreasing we're going to put here the negative sign so that is b sub o so the same also here so this is negative b sub o okay then we have the boundary also your y which is equal to zero okay substituting that one to our general solution we have so we have your b which is negative b sub o the maximum velocity which is now this one okay we can uh, we can cancel this one so we can lower the equation so I'm going to change this one to since we have we can cancel now this one and this one so we can rewrite it as a 2 and this is already let's say I'm gonna change this one mm -hmm. okay, to y squared okay then we have now going back we have your 2p divided by your pi d squared times your length then we have your mu then we're going to multiply the value with y y so y the value of y which is 0 squared then we have the value of here your y is 0 times the c sub 1 plus your c sub 2 okay so this one is zero 
Okay, so I'm going to cancel out the, this is 0 and this is 0. So we have the value of your C sub 2 which is equal to the negative B sub O. So let's box this one for our value of the C sub 2. I'm gonna color this one to highlight. So next condition or next boundary we have add your b which is equal to 0 and at y is equal now to d. So substituting it again to the original equation so we have your b which is now 0 which is equal to negative 2p okay, that will be divided by pi d squared times the length then you have your mu then multiply the value your y which is d squared plus the value of here your y which is d times the c sub 1 plus the c sub 2 where the value of your c sub 2 is equal to negative b sub o so the value of your c sub 2 is equal to the b sub b sub o so we're going to change this one to negative b sub o so this will become now your negative value so this will become b sub o negative okay. so let's transpose to get the value of c sub 1 so we have um, so let's combine first so let's try to transpose this one we have c sub 1 that will be positive 2p pi times diameter squared then you have your l then you have your mu then this is t squared then plus the b sub o okay, since we have here the positive already so let's try to combine this one so to make it in one common denominator so we have your c sub 1 that will be 2p Oh, this is with D, sorry. With D. Okay, with D. So, we have P, 2 times the the P. Sorry, wait. Okay, I'm sorry, I forgot. So, this is pressure. This is force. So I'm going to change this all P to force. So, again, uh, so, uh, just only replace the P by force. So, sorry about that. So, Again, going back, so we will try to achieve a common denominator for this uh, whole number in a fraction. So this will be d squared, then divided by, uh, so this, this one will be multiplied by the value. So this is d squared, then it will be b sub o, that will be pi d squared times the length, then u. Then having the common denominator for this whole equation, so we have here this one. So expressing the whole one common denominator, we have pi d squared, then you have your length, then the absolute dynamic viscosity. Alright, so continuing from the equation uh, below, from below, so we have now your C1. So your C1 that will be 2F. So let's change this one. Um, try to this one be on the first side so we have here b sub or c sub 1 we have your b sub o or let's say okay i'm going to change this one to that will be pi b squared times the length mu then you have your b sub o plus your 2 times the force then your clearance square divided by that will be pi d squared times your L, then absolute dynamic viscosity, that transpose this one to this side, so we have your D. So we have now the value of your C sub 1. Now we have the value of C sub y. Now we're going to substitute the value to this one to our general solution, then rewriting our equation. No? So substituting that one to this one. Okay. Now substituting the value of c sub 1 to the uh, c sub 1 and c sub 2 to our general equation, mm, we have here uh, this one. So we have your b that will be negative 2f. 
so rewriting this one okay so we substituted the value of c sub 1 and c sub 2 to the general equation so let's try to separate you know, our, which is common so we have uh, so rewriting it again our equation or solution so we have here your 2f with the y squared so we have your pi d squared then we have your length then absolute and viscosity so let's try to factor so we'll try to factor this one so we have here uh, this will be pi d squared then we have your length absolute then sub o and this will be your y so this is over pi d squared then we have your length absolute then we have your d here plus this is 2 times your force d squared divided by pi d squared l length then absolute dynamic viscosity then we have your d and this is multiplied by y and we have the minus of b sub o so let's can uh, we uh, we can cancel what is common here so we have here this one this is already in common so we can cancel out this one so rewriting it again we have now 2 f that will be y squared that will be pi d squared then you have your length absolute then plus the b sub o uh, velocity okay then you have your y here then over d plus 2 f 2 times the force then you have your clearance squared then you have your y this is pi d squared l mu and you have your d minus the b sub o and we can factor this part and this one so that will be 2 f Okay. which is your common here so it will be pi d squared then your length and mu multiply it by since, since you have here your y minus um, or let's say we can take out also the y here okay so or we can leave it like this so that will be y d squared so we forgot to cancel this one so let's cancel this one and this one so this is one this is now zero so we have this is uh, change this one to um, y d this become your become now your yd no? so that will be minus so from here that will be yd minus the uh, um, y squared so taking from here then close parenthesis then also we can factor out this one we have plus sorry that will be minus so let's change this one this minus b sub o then it will be multiplied by uh, this is one mm. <clears throat> so minus um, y over d so we have now the general solution uh, general solution to the general equation now the rate of flow through the clearance in space can be obtained by integrating the rate of flow through an element between the limits with y is 0 and your y is equal to d so going back to the, our figure okay. so you will notice here plus no so the boundaries that is from y uh, that is from 0 uh, where the y is 0 and y is the full maximum value which is d. 
so we need to find the boolean for rate here at this portion since we have now the velocity and also the area that is being involved that is the uh, area from this portion so usually our boolean for rate that will be q is equal to area times the velocity since our area here is at this part that is the pi, uh, pi d which is at this side and this side so that is the annular no and we have the change in dy so to how much is the uh, from change from here from starting from the wall of the piston going to the wall of the cylinder so that is our boundary conditions from the equation okay so starting with remembering from your fluid mechanics so we have the velocity of bullet which is equal to area times your velocity since we have those areas so the area that will be pi d since we have the change so, so, be that, uh, so we can use the d uh, or let's say this is y okay where your y can be the uh, can, uh, are between uh, 0 to d okay the, when we pi d y then it will be multiplied by our velocity since we have already the velocity okay now let's do integrate with this one with the boundaries so we have your q now we have going to integrate the boundaries which is from from the boundaries of 0 uh, 0 to d so that the maximum clearance no? from the maximum clearance the, looking back to the figure again so we have here from the maximum clearance in between here so you have here from z or zero to y uh, to d. So we have here. This is your d. So we have um, going to integrate it with respect to dy since you have your annular area. So that will be velocity times the pi d. Uh, dy diameter and you have your dy here so, this one okay so we can integrate that one with respect to dy and we have your boundary now we're going to substitute the value of the velocity here so inputting the value of velocity that we get from our differential uh, from our general solution from our differential equation okay so we can rewrite our uh, substituting that one so we have your q is equal to the integrate of you have your d here okay so the value of your uh, v so, so that will be uh, 2f <coughs> so let's do a close parenthesis with this one 2f over pi d squared then times l then you have your mu here then this is multiplied to y d minus your y squared then minus the v sub o or the velocity maximum then it will be multiplied to 1 minus your y over your d then this is multiplied by pi times the diameter then you have the dy so let's try to take out that is what is constant here so this is already constant so let's try to break apart the the uh, the, uh, the, uh, the, the problem so that we can easily solve the problem uh, the problem or the, for the solution so let's try to uh, take away which is your constant here so let's put it here and there distributing the values here so let's distribute the integrate from this part and going here and going here so let's do that so let's try here the boundary is a go so distributing the pi dy so we have here 2f so this is pi d squared then we have your l times the mu then um, the pi d, I'm going to put the pi d here, 
okay then it is multiplied to y t minus your y squared so this is your dy okay. so let's have a bracket here then it will be minus by another boundary which is b from 0 so that's negative that will be b sub o multiplied by 1 minus your y d times your pi d dy so just parenthesis of this one so cancelling what is common here so we're going to cancel this one pi and this one and this one and this one okay so we'll take out from the solution since this is already a constant so we can rewrite it as a <coughs> pull out the this constant here we can rewrite this as um, 2 times your force since 5 is already done we have d times l then we have u u then we have the integrator d 0 then you have your y sub d minus the y squared then you have your dy then on the other side so we'll be to pull out the value of b sub o integrate that will be d o then so we're going to distribute also uh, first you have to take out a constant uh, y over d then you have your so also we can take out here also this one so we need to undo that one okay okay so rewriting that one so let's take out the b sub uh it will be uh pi d b sub o that be one the boundary will be to zero we have one minus your y so d then we have your p1 okay so we can now integrate uh, integrate this one so this will be okay so this is 2f constant that will be e times your l mu so let's do cross parenthesis this one this is uh, with respect to dy so this will be have uh, y squared here over 2 times your d then we have the boundary of 0 to d so this is 0 to d then minus this will become uh, y cube over 3 okay then the boundaries between 0 to d okay then the other side we have next we have pi d d sub o so we're going to integrate this one this will be um, dy that will be y boundary d to zero then this will become uh, minus y squared over 2d okay y squared okay so y squared over 2d then the boundary of d and zero okay then let's try to substitute those values so we have here 2 f again then we have your d l mu so we have here so this will be d squared over 2 times your d so minus so that will be 0 okay. minus so this will be d cube over 3 minus 0 okay. then in the other side uh, next we have pi d d sub o so this will become now that will be d minus 0 minus, uh, minus this will be uh, d squared over 2d and minus 0 so this will be 0 squared over 2d 
see the squared substitute as 0 okay here is that equal to so plus that one so let's try to combine our equation here so we have 2f over your d times your length then your mu so combining the so this is already cancelled out this one is 0 and this one is 0 so that will be 1 half minus so combining this one we have d squared then you have your minus your uh, sorry this is already d cube so d cube combining this one we have the value of your d cube over 6 then we have your find d and your d sub o here combining this one also so we'll be canceling this one so this is already 0 and this one is gone and this one is cancelled out this one that is cancelled okay. so this is now so this is now equal to okay. so this is now equal to we have now this one one minus one half that will be also one half so d over two and we can rewrite it also our equation we can factor it like this so we have now a q so it will become now factor out we have here phi d okay then we're going to multiply this whole equation by two times your force times here your clearance divided down by six since we have here phi d squared okay so it will be cancelled out it remain at one so d squared then multiply by l then the absolute dynamic viscosity then we have here minus one half okay then you have your velocity and maximum then you have your diameter okay so so we have now the volume flow rate so this is the same also with this one so just on the rearranging our equation okay. now if you're going to distribute the phi d here to the close parameters equation so it will arrive also at this equation so they are on the same equation Of the volume of the liquid flowing through the clearance space per second, so it must be equal to the volume per second space by the piston. So the the volume, so going back to the figure here, so noting that one that as the piston compresses the liquid, so the volume that is being occupied by the piston is being pressed here and it is being brought out at the clearance so the amount of the fluid being displaced is the same also the volume flow rate must be equal and must, must must be equal by the volume flow rate that is being displaced that is going outside uh, going outside here at the clearance so they have the same the volume displaced is the same also as the volume flow rate that is being pushed in the side of the clearance so our volume flow rate which is usually on the side of, uh, of the uh, of the under of the piston so we have the volume flow rate which is your area times your velocity then or let's say this is the visible so you have your q which is your area that will be 5 over 4 d squared and multiply by the visible for the maximum velocity now uh, this is equal to our equation the phi d of the volume flow rate that is on the annular so it will be multiplied to uh, 2 times your force d squared divided by 
six pi b squared dot l and the absolute viscosity minus the one half and we have your b sub o maximum velocity times your d okay. so rewriting our equation this one mm, we will try to transpose and also eliminate what is common so we have here our b sub o so that will be pi b over that will be multiplied by 4 and this one is also pi b squared okay. cross multiplication then multiply again by 2 l fourths 2 fourths b squared divided by 6 pi b squared you have your length absolute viscosity minus the one half uh, viscosity then you have the clearance so we're going to cancel which is the common here so sure this is cancelled out and this is cancelled also this one will be cancelled out then so we're going to distribute it inside our so we have your b sub o that will be uh, 4 times a uh, 4 times 2 that will be 8 force b squared divided by so this will be 6 pi b cube then you have your length absolute viscosity minus uh, that will be 4 over 2 abs uh, viscosity and then maximum velocity so that will be d so this is over D. So let's try to uh, transpose this one in the other side since they are in common. So and reduce this value. Uh, this will, will become two. This is over D. So uh, one. And this will become three. And this will become denominator of 2 before so let's transpose this one so we have your b sub o will be plus uh, 2 b sub o we have your d divided by the diameter then it is equal now to your 4 f so we have your b squared here then below we have 3 pi the diameter is the cube then you have your length then absolute dynamic viscosity and let's try to factor this one so we can factor this one it will be visible uh, absolute viscosity uh, absolute uh, maximum velocity that will multiply by 1 plus 2d over your d which is also this one is equal to your 4f B squared, we have your 3 pi b cube, we have your length and absolute dynamic viscosity. So let's do a, a cross multiplication that one. So, where uh, what we're, I'm trying to do here, class, is I want to get the uh, format or to achieve the format of force, which is equal to c, which is dumping constant, then your maximum velocity which will be so well, to get the value of the dampening constant which is c and so i'm trying to achieve this equation now so we make the transfer uh, transpose here so we have your b sub o uh, the maximum velocity that will be multiplied by 3 pi B diameter cube you have your length absolute viscosity then multiply by 1 plus 2d over the diameter which is, is equal now to um, let's take out the force so we have the force here then this is divided by 4 and b squared 
So let's try to rearrange our equation in terms of this one so we can get the back in the dumping constant. So I'm going to factor out. So we have now your force is equal to we need to factor that will be 3 pi b cube times your length. Then we need to multiply by 1 plus 2d over d. Then I'm going to brought out the value of u or mu or the absolute viscosity outside the equation. We have your force b squared. Then this is multiplied by absolute dynamic viscosity times the is the bow. So we are almost close. And we almost forgot the value of this one. This is t cube. So I'm gonna change for this whole part. It will be 3. Okay, so changing that one. So this a uh, small error. So we forgot to change this one. This is d cube. Okay, so we already changed that one in the entire uh, equation. Sorry about that. Okay, so going back. So we have now this form. Okay. Or we can now taking the, the value of the dumping constant which is C. So this can be or still be expressed into so this can be 3 pi d to the cube you have your length. So you have 4 d diameter cube that is multiplied by 1 plus your 2d over your d then this is multiplied by your mu then you have your velocity so this is now our equation for the dampening constant uh, equation for the force with the dampening constant you can have an equation like this one so our Dampening constant now will become uh, since we try to get this C. Okay. So there are dampening constant with the value of this one, okay, this equation. So we're trying to achieve now this one. So from our dampening constant, we can see in this form, type of form. So our dampening constant C is equal to it will be so you is equal now to your 3 pi 3 pi diameter then you have your length then this is divided by 4 d cube then multiply by 1 plus 2 times your d the d okay. then this is all multiplied by absolute dynamic viscosity now the dampening constant of a dash pad so the same bar for example I am an application of a something like this and uh, uh, observer so looking at the overview of our solution problem to generate an equation for the dash part.